Green. Tim Hankowich is here. Hi. For the kickoff to the holiday season, yeah. um, you all will be very busy. Right. Every musician in the county <laughs> will be busy over the next few weeks with all kinds of different gigs. Well, with, if you're a musician, if you're not eating leftover turkey... It's time for yeah. the Nutcracker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just part of the holiday tradition. This has been a great holiday tradition right. for the orchestra, though. Right. Because while, you know, in the before time, I, I'm sure that the orchestra played lots of selections from the right. Nutcracker at right. various holiday concerts. But then during your tenure, you started a partnership with Ballet Quad Cities. Right. Yeah. So you are able to actually stage it as as it, it was should, intended it, yeah as it should be done well the interesting thing about there there is a difference between concert performance and actually performing it as a ballet it's it's a living organism so if, if it's a concert experience uh, you know i can change up the tempos i can do certain things um, but it's a i i i view it as kind of a one dimensional maybe two dimensional presentation whereas with ballet the way it was actually intended it is a theatrical piece and and what i'm doing I know what they're doing, and I I can tailor what the orchestra is doing to what they're doing on stage. So, for for example, if you know they're leading up to a big leap or something like that, and I know it's coming, I can make micro adjustments with the tempo to make sure that leap coincides perfectly with the music. Uh, in this day and age, because it's less expensive, so many ballet companies dance to like recorded music, uh, and uh, and a recording isn't going to adapt to what you do. And so, in many ways, we are in real time tailoring an experience for both the dancers and the musicians. And it's a breathing art form. And at the same time, we're creating a tradition that that kids of all ages just absolutely adore. In a way, then it's the exact opposite of what you had to do a few weeks ago. Yes, for the Wizard of Oz. Correct. Which you had to meet the movie at each of its time oh, that points. Oh, exactly right. I mean, a, a film or or a recording is immovable, and when you have to do a live performance that is based on something that's immovable. Um, it's really difficult to to coincide together and to, to sync sync up, and so yeah, that you're at the great point. It's the exact opposite of what we did for for Wizard of Oz. So I know that the the actual ballet, the choreography, only changes you know every so often. Right, right. Uh, so you know. Uh, so how much I know that you do go down there and kind sure, of watch and sure. the, you know how much of that do you do in a in a year where it's not too much different from well, they a prior year. Well, their company changes every year. Uh, okay. so sometimes they oh, might so different dancers. Different dancers yeah. and sometimes they might have more male leads or more f female leads and so depending on their cast they will they they do adjust the the uh, the choreography. For example, this year I know um, the battle scene will be completely different and uh, they're going to launch something on us on this slingshot into enemy lines which will be kind of cute to see okay yeah i mean so there, right. there, there are these there. i'm guessing slingshots yes not a part of every symphony concert exactly well even for those of you who know the nutcracker there's a spot in the first half that has a gunshot and uh, that sometimes takes our patrons by surprise, and we sometimes get letters uh, about that, even though it's part of the show. And so this is, <laughs> and, and again, three hundred years old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, political correctness has changed over over the years. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> spoilers, yeah. spoilers for a 200-year-old work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, to, to your overarching point, though, the, the choreography does change, but the plot doesn't. I mean, the Nutcracker is the Nutcracker. Uh, and so because it, it ultimately is the telling of the story through dance. And so there are micro changes depending on cast and slight deviations from what they've done from years before. But the, the, essentially, the production is very similar from year to year. So uh, one show only. We uh, two make, shows. Or two, one show only yeah. in Cedar Rapids. No, two shows. Oh, you're doing two. No, we're doing a double. This is unusual. Okay. Uh, we're doing a Saturday matinee and a Sunday. Oh, one day. Yeah. One day, two shows. Yeah. Okay. 2.30 I... and 7.30 on, on Saturday. Okay. Um, and and that's um, that is actually very uh, taxing for the dancers and the musicians. There's a lot to play. Uh, that's why in the years past we've kind of just done it in the evenings. Uh, but I think this time we're just going to see what happens when we when we do two in well, one day. Well, you've got a lot of young dancers right. whose moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. And oh, notice yeah. I said young dancers, not young girls. 
dancers yes. of both genders, yes. of all genders, uh, who would like to see this. And, yeah. you know, coming to the matinee is better for families. Yes, and we have wonderful Clara, uh, a young, uh, young girl who is uh, dancing that role, and a, a young African-American prince who is just a wonderful dancer. I can't wait to see him on stage. And we should mention that you'll then be at the ballet's home base right. next weekend right. for those who... Can't want, make it this weekend that's right. or, or just want to go to the Quad Cities for the weekend. Well, this is the reason why I like our, our partnership works so well. Orchestras are very expensive. Uh, ballet companies are very expensive. And so by um, sharing our resources and playing in each other's communities, um, when we bring in the in the ballet company, we, we don't pay for them. And when we play in Quad Cities, they don't pay for us. And so, in fact, we are uh, keeping both of our expenses down and at the same time partnering and creating an art form and championing an art form that otherwise would not be seen. And as you said, two ballet companies in particular uh, have to use recorded music right. a lot of times. And Correct. this has got to be, it's got to be fun for them to get to perform with a live orchestra. Absolutely, because everything about live performance is about timing. Whether you're a comedian, whether you're a musician, whether you're an actor, everything is about timing. And so to be able to have this back and forth between what's going on on stage in terms of dance and tailoring the music to fit that, it's a lot of fun. Where does the Nutcracker fall in Tchaikovsky's career? Oh, it's what was, well, you know, when he when he wrote this, you know, was it was it an immediate hit, or oh, you know, was yeah. it big for him? Or so it's kind of happened in mid career for him, okay. and and it was a flop, uh, okay. complete like so many things that we consider masterworks. <laughs> <laughs> when they first came out of the gate, they were flops, and and the the ballet was a flop. Uh, he tried to bring it back a couple times, and it just never took. And the reason why Nutcracker is so ubiquitous today is that an American ballet company in the 1940s and 50s uh, called the American Ballet Company that uh, that's still um, still mm -hmm. in existence, they re quote unquote rediscovered the work. And they made it their Christmas so holiday that tradition. that recently, just in the that, last 75 years. That recently, uh, and now the rest is history. You can't go into uh, an elevator or a shopping center without hearing music from the Nutcracker. I mean, it is synonymous with Christmas. So uh, it's probably the most famous piece ever written. And Tchaikovsky didn't get to enjoy that fame during his lifetime. Well, I love how you said before we went on the air that the thing about the Nutcracker is it's really the if the if the Macy's parade is the kickoff to right. the holiday shopping season, the Nutcracker is the kickoff to the holiday music season. Somebody was asking me the other day, like, don't you don't you, you do this every year? Don't you get tired of it? You know, and I said, no. First of all, it's it's great music, uh, but. What I love about it is that it symbolizes the holiday season. And so, you know, I, I get excited and I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, well, when when we're finished. <laughs> I mean, yeah. when, when when everyone can go home and, and be with their families. But I mean, it, it, it's the start of that holiday excitement and feeling in, in, in the pit of your stomach that I just absolutely adore. It's the Nutcracker, Ballet Quad Cities and Orchestra Iowa, Saturday, December 7th yeah. in Cedar Rapids. Two shows at the Paramount. Yes, 2.30 and, and then, 7.30. And then yep. next weekend in the Quad Cities, if that works out better for you. Uh, all right. I know. Picking a favorite song is like uh, picking a favorite child, but what's your favorite musical moment? From that? In oh, the Nutcracker. Uh, I'll give you two. Okay. Uh, you said musical moment. Uh, musical moment, I'm still the Trepak fan. Mm. I just mm. love that. Um, the, my favorite theatrical moment is at the end of the first act when the snow comes and starts falling. Uh, uh, and the kids, okay. and we have, you know, our Discovery Chorus, for those of you who haven't been to this production, our Discovery Chorus, our children's chorus, is in the audience um, carrying candles and they're singing along. So it's this incredible scene where you have all these ballet dancers on, on the stage and it's snowing and you've got these kids with their candles singing along. It's just like, oh, it's not to make you weep. It's so great. It's great. It's uh, this weekend for the uh, Paramount shows, next weekend for the Quad Cities, and then you're right back at it for Holiday Spectacular. So oh, yeah. come back in a couple of weeks you and bet. we'll talk Holiday Spectacular. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Yeah, we got some great things up our sleeve for that too. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. You bet. Thank you. Uh, oh, we should mention tickets. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. How, 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 how can you go? Small but meaningful detail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can call 1-800-369-TUNE to talk to a, a person, or you can go just online at artsiowa.com or orchestraiowa.org. Um, you can throw up smoke signals, uh, or you can walk in, and they'd be happy to help you. Okay. Tim Hankowicz from Orchestra Iowa. Thanks, Tim. Great. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio most weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast app. 
I'm Dennis Green. I'll talk to you later.